In this screencast, we are going to determine the allowed energies and wave function for a particle in a one-dimensional box. Inside of our box, which we're going to define as length L, our particle is free to move in the horizontal direction. But the particle is confined to the box and it cannot escape. The first step is to define the potential energy of the system as a function of x. Now inside the box, the potential energy is going to be zero. This is going to allow our particle to move freely inside the box. At the walls of the box and outside of the box, the potential energy is going to go to infinity. This is going to ensure that our particle cannot escape. Now we know the general solution to the Schrodinger equation for a particle in free motion, and that is psi of x is equal to a sine kx plus b cosine kx. Inside of our box, our particle is free to move around, and so the general solution to the Schrodinger equation is valid. Uh, but we need to take a look at our boundary conditions. We know that the particle cannot be located at the walls of our box or outside of the box. And so we know that our wave function at x equals 0 and x equals L has to be equal to 0. Now if we substitute in 0 for our first boundary condition, we find that psi of 0 is equal to a sine k0 plus b cosine k0. And the sine of 0 is going to be equal to 0, but the cosine of 0 is going to be equal to 1. So the only way that this expression is going to be equal to 0 is if b, in fact, is equal to 0. So after evaluating our first boundary condition, we see that psi of x is now equal to a sine kx. Uh, where we still need to determine the values of our constants a and k. Now let's take a look at our second boundary condition. Psi of L is also equal to 0. So let's substitute this in. Psi of L is equal to 0 is equal to a sine kL. Uh, so now we need to figure out all of the values for kL, which makes this expression true. So where does a sine function equal 0? Sine equals 0 at integer values of pi. So that means that kL has to be equal to integer values of pi in order for our overall expression to be equal to 0. Let's call that integer n. kL then equals n pi. And if we solve for k, we find that k equals n pi over L. We've now used our boundary conditions in order to solve for two of our constants. And what we found is that psi of x is equal to a sine n pi x over L. At this point, we can actually solve for our allowed energy levels for our particle. In order to find these energy levels, we have to go back to our general Schrodinger equation. Uh, you can see here that the potential term has dropped out because inside the box, our potential is defined to be 0. So we have now found our general psi of x expression. And we can take the second derivative to get our second derivative of psi with respect to x. If we plug this back into the general expression and solve for our energy, we find that e sub n is equal to h squared n squared over 8m l squared. At this point, you can see that our energy levels take on discrete quantized values. We've now solved for our wave function for our particle in a one-dimensional box and determined the allowed energy levels for our particle. A note in our solution for our wave function, we still have not found the value of our constant a. And this is going to involve normalization of our wave function. We'll take a closer look at how to normalize a wave function in an upcoming screencast.